In this video, we're going to do some more examples involving series. So here is the example. Let's determine if the series converges or diverges. And if it does converge, then find the sum. So in part a, I have the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of n over n plus 1. So first off, just getting a feel for what this series is, uh, let's plug in some values of n. So first I'll plug in n equals 1, because that's what I begin with here at the bottom. Um, so when I plug that in, I get 1 over 2. Then I go the next integer up. So that would be uh, plugging in 2. That would give me 2 over 3. And then I'll plug in 3, and that'll give me 3 over 4, plus dot dot dot. And this goes on to infinity. So I have an infinite sum that looks like this. So we might be able to tell just by looking at this whether or not this converges or diverges. If we're unsure, what we could do is we could try the nth term test first. Try the nth term test first. Because when I look at these terms, one half, two thirds, three fourths, they look like they're getting larger and larger. And moreover, I can sort of see that it seems like they're getting closer and closer to one. And if the limit of the terms isn't zero, the series is definitely going to diverge. So let's just see if that happens. So the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1. So let's say I want to evaluate this limit. Well, the top and the bottom are both infinity. So we could use L'Hopital's rule. I'm just going to write LH to indicate, oh, this is L'Hopital's rule. So I'm using L'Hopital's rule at this step. So doing this, I'll get the limit as n goes to infinity. And doing L'Hopital's, I take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. Uh, and I get 1 over 1. So now that's just 1. And there's nothing to plug into. There's no n's to plug into anymore. This is just 1. So that's my limit. And that is not equal to 0. So because the limit of my terms is not 0, we definitely know that this series diverges. Okay, so recall that if the limit of the terms is not zero, the series diverges. But if the limit of the terms was zero, that doesn't tell us anything. It might converge, but it might diverge if the limit was zero. All right, so let's do another example. So this time I have the series from n equals one to infinity of one over n. So this is actually a really famous series. It shows up quite often. So if I plug in some values, plugging in 1, I get 1. Then plugging in 2, I get a half. Plugging in 3, I get a third. And then plus dot, dot, dot. So this series is called the harmonic series. The harmonic series. And it shows up so often that I'm going to highlight this name, harmonic series. OK, so we actually need a more sophisticated argument to determine whether or not this converges or diverges. Okay, so, so I'm going to end up doing some uh, clever sort of algebraic manipulations, but don't stress out too much about how I, how I come up with those algebraic manipulations. That's not really the point of this. Mostly I want you to be able to follow what I'm doing and understand why it works. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write just the first term by itself, 1, and then just the second term by itself, 1 half. And then the next two terms I'm going to write together, so 1 third plus 1 fourth. And then I'll write the next four terms together, so 1 fifth plus 1 sixth plus 1 seventh plus 1 eighth. And if we were to keep going, the next group would have eight terms, and the next group after that would have eight terms, sorry, 16 terms put together. All right, so now, here is what I'm going to say about this. So the first two terms, the 1 and the 1 half, I'm going to leave them how they are. For the 1 third plus the 1 fourth, this whole thing is greater than, so I'm writing a greater than sort of rotated, so instead of writing it like that, I'm writing it like this, because I'm about to write what's less than this underneath it. That's why I've sort of rotated it. So I'm going to keep the 1 fourth the same, but I'm going to replace the 1 third with something smaller than it. In fact, 1 fourth is smaller than one third. That's why it's okay to write this sign. Basically what I've said is one third plus one fourth is greater than one fourth plus one fourth. 
And that's true because one third is bigger than this one fourth. Okay, so now let's do the same type of thing with these four terms. And this is gonna be greater than, I'm gonna keep the one eighth the same, but all the other terms, I'm gonna replace them with a one eighth. Because one eighth is less than, it is less than one seventh. One eighth is also less than this one sixth. And one eighth is also less than one fifth. So adding up four one eighths overall is less than adding up one eighth plus a seventh plus a sixth plus a fifth. Okay. All right, so now after I've done these inequalities, you know, what does this sort of simplify to? So, so I have that one at the front, and then I have this one half. When I add up one fourth plus one fourth, that is also one half. When we add up four one eighths together, well, that's also one half. And at this point, we might be able to see that when we looked at, if we were to look at the next group of terms, that would actually be eight one sixteenths. That is also going to add up to one half. And all the subsequent groups like this will keep adding up to one half. So what is this sum? What is one plus a half plus a half plus a half plus a half? I keep just having an infinite number of one halves after this first one. Well, that is definitely infinity. This sum is an infinite sum. So what we've just shown here, and the key is all of these inequality symbols. What we've just shown is that our series, the sum from one to infinity of one over n, this harmonic series, is greater than this series right here. It's greater than this series. And that series had an infinite sum. Okay, so if our series, the harmonic series, is greater than infinity, that means its sum must also be infinite, which means it diverges. So this technique of sort of setting up these inequalities to determine what my series does isn't a technique that we're gonna be focusing on a lot in our class. We're, I'm briefly just touching on it here. So what I care about most about this example is that you understand how I got to this result. All right, so I wanna end this video now by just sort of summing up some strategies on how to check for convergence and divergence. So the first thing that I can do is, is do the nth term test. So when I do the nth term test, there are two sort of things that could happen. So one is the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n is not equal to zero. If it's not equal to zero, then my series diverges. But on the flip side, if the limit as n goes to infinity of my terms is equal to zero, well, in that situation, I don't know what happens, whether it converges or diverges, at least not right away. So what I would have to ask myself is, is it, whoops, is it a series that I know? So in particular, that means the ones that we've talked about are geometric, telescoping, and now we've talked about harmonic. So again, there are gonna be two possibilities. If the answer is yes, if it's one of those, if it's geometric, telescoping, or harmonic, then we just use the methods that we've talked about for that type of series. So if the series was a geometric series, we just use our methods for analyzing geometric series to tell if they converge or diverge. Okay. But if not, so if, if it's not a series that we know, we really won't see examples like this in our class. This is typically stuff that you would see in a different math class. In Math 23, you would take a much more detailed look at sequences and series. And the way in general that you would handle situations like this is, in Math 23, you learn about what are called series convergence tests. 
All right, so I don't want you to worry too much about that because that's really beyond the scope of our class. So let me just box this, box these strategy tips.